What up, what up, what up? This is Big Daddy coming at you for Big Daddy Forever. Brought to you by crazyhoodies.com. To all the people who have gone to my shop and have been picking up the hoodies and the swag and uh, all the good stuff, the coffee cups, the shirts, thank you. Thank you for supporting your boy. Thank you for repping your boy. And for everyone who is on the fence about buying something from crazyhoodies.com, just go check it out, folks. That's crazyhoodies.com spelled with a Z. Check it out. Tell me what you think. And if there's something that you feel I should create for your nerdy needs, yes, and I said nerdy needs or geeky needs because that's exactly what I am. I'm a big-ass kid who's a nerd who just loves life and he wants to do his thing and Crazy Hoodies would be for you. Go check it out. How's everyone doing? It's been a week. Damn. And a lot has happened in the week. No, I'm not going to go into the news and everything because that's just not my specialty anymore i'm not gonna talk about the news and stuff like that because the news gets me depressed even though i do watch news that way i'm informed i'm not gonna sit back and and expound on it because this is a there's just too damn much everything from the republicans and democrats at each other's throats to crazy murders to this building up war in the ukraine to you know the purchase of Warner Brothers DC by Discovery and they're freaking out about their movie lineup. Everything's getting pushed back. Man, it's crazy. It's absolutely nuts. Ain't nothing sane in the world anymore, huh? Well, except for me. And if you believe that, I'm saying shit. (laughs) Anyway, folks, I hope you're doing good. I hope you're standing in your peace, your presence, your power, your love. That's right. Love yourself. Because no one's going to love you like like you do. Sure, you may have a spouse. You may have children. Love yourself first. It's all good. No, don't, don't apologize for it either. Love yourself. Stand in yourself. And stand in your power and your beauty. Just like I said, it's all going to work out, folks. Um, yeah, my little spot's turned into a little bit of a QA. and a I love it. I get asked. No, I get stopped on the street sometimes or get clients in and, Shout out to my one client who was at the, who was at Mountain Medicine. That, you know, I talked to you in length about what I do, my podcast, for checking it out. I appreciate you. I really do. I, it's it's always fun talking about people, talking to people about podcasting, and I honestly feel sorry for the sniffles, y'all. Just them damn these damn allergies right now, boy. These allergies are kicking my ass, and I can't stand it. But you know, it, it's fun talking with people about podcasting. About what I used to do with the radio and stuff like that. And I tell people, there's no, really no difference. Ooh, shit, excuse me. Sorry, these little bloopers on on, on the podcast, huh? <laughs> Yawning and shit like that. <laughs> Someone called me out on that. Why do you always yawn on your podcast? Because it's a body process. It doesn't mean you're tired. It just means your body's craving oxygen. And that only happens when I'm sitting here talking all in one breath and just going on and on and on and on and on. And then my body just needs that one good breath. So it yawns. (sighs) I can just stay right now. Shit. Sorry. Anyway, let's jump into this Q&A, y'all. I do. I love these Q&As, man. I've been getting a lot. I apologize to the people on Instagram. I forgot to screenshot the, the questions. So I lost them. I, I, I really apologize. I, I And that's where I usually have my Q&A folks is on Instagram or I leave my email in the comments below. And people have been utilizing that a lot lately. They've been sending your boy some, some good old emails and stuff like that. Not only that, it seems like the sex people have been sending me sex shit to my Google Drive. And I know there's a lot of people having that damn problem right now. So this morning I went through my Google Drive and just accepted all of them and I blocked them. And that seems to have worked so far. Maybe I won't put my email address <laughs> anymore. That way I'll be getting that shit, man. That that I had a whole bunch. Just one notification after another. I emailed Google, asked them, how can I stop this? I'm still waiting for a reply. It's been a week. So thank you, Google, for not replying and for me figuring it out on my own that I have to go into the, actually have to accept it and scroll past all the dirty pictures and hit block so and so that's worked so thank you for not helping i guess yeah bitches anyway let's jump into this q a folks and i got some i got some good ones 
I did. I got four. I'm gonna answer four of them today. So, and they, yeah, they were they were pretty good. It's uh, Big Daddy. What's something that people misunderstand about you? Everything. I I'm I'm loving. I'm compassionate. I'm a nerd. I am. I'm I'm funny. I have a sense of humor that people either will or won't get. I, I'm more old school when it comes to my humor. I'm very old school. Um, I'm like Richard Pryor, Dolomite. You know. All those, all all the old black comedians, like a lot, even like Freddie Prince Senior, a lot of the old, uh, a lot of Mexican comedians. That's just my sense of humor. That's what I grew up with. I don't get Seinfeld or some of these other white comedians because that shit to me, they're, 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 to me, they're just not funny. And people get all in their films, and I say, well, oh, you don't watch Seinfeld? Fuck no, fuck him. I don't get. I'm sorry, I don't get white comedy. I don't. I don't get the deadpan bullshit. I don't get none of that, man. I'm sorry. I don't. It's not funny to me. Funny to me is is watching shit that happens every day to people. Now, even some of the stuff that's happened to me that people has laughed about and I've laughed at, my, at myself about. I, I'm misunderstood because I just roll different. And it's not for me to make people accepting of my differences. I just do my thing. And if you accept it, could. Cool. Sorry. Good. <laughs> cool. Um, I, I usually go at everything with the best intentions. Uh, recently, I wanted to help someone. She's getting married, and I guess I said the wrong thing, and she didn't take it too well. So my intention was to try to do something good for her, and but that didn't come out that way, and now we're barely talking or don't talk at all. And someone else, I told someone about my feelings a couple of years ago. They mistook it as I wanted a flat out romantic relationship. They're not talking to me now. So I feel I'm misunderstood by how I am just so damn blunt. I, I If people ask me a question, I'm going to tell you how I feel. In this world of sugarcoating, people just don't like bluntness. Uh, I can take bluntness. I can take I can take all that because to me it's just your damn opinion. But people misunderstand it as me not giving a shit by blowing it off. And I'm not trying to blow them off. I'm just trying to come to their way of understanding. And that's been my whole mindset. I I want to understand, not be understood. And people still don't like it. So I've come to the conclusion that I'm happy in in my misunderstood ways. It's not up to people to accept them to love them or whatnot but the only thing that matters is that i accept them and i'm happy being like i said in my misunderstood self like i said i love my comic books i love my poetry i love my art i love science i i, I people don't mis, don't take me as a as a science dude but when we start talking science when me and some of my friends talk science they look at me like I'm crazy, like, damn, you know a lot. Yeah, I'm sorry. Did you take me as a typical nigga? What? Typical half breed? What? And some nine times out of ten, at least some of them answer honestly. Well, yeah. Cool. Thank you for your honesty. And fuck you. <laughs> stereotype me that way. Well, I guess I stereotyped them as a typical white boy who just thought I was just another typical ass black half breed person. Shit. I guess, I don't know, I guess it goes both ways sometimes, don't it, folks? <laughs> and I can hear people's reactions right now. Why does it always have to be color with you, Philip? I can't say purple. That purple guy right there misunderstood me. Fuck me. He's my orange ass and shit. Fuck him. I can't say that. <laughs> oh, boy. I know I'm going to catch hell for that one again. Yeah, some of y'all be getting your feelings about some of my remarks about race sometimes did you guys leave me you guys don't leave comments in my podcast but you'll y'all will sit there and dm me trying to talk shit and just be brave okay just leave a comment uh, uh, but a lot of you I, I know it's a lot of folks don't leave comments because you guys are afraid of the of of the fire back that's going to happen okay get used to it people you have something to say people have something to say just don't get on your damn feelings about it. Accept each other's words and move on. Cool. Yeah, that, that's all you got to do. Leave a comment and be understood. Cool. All right. Next question. Big Daddy, what do you think the world will look like in five years? I 
personally, I think the world is going to look like a hot ass mess. It's it's I've seen I it, you know being a science guy too. I look I look at what's happening. Um, we have a lot of land that's under federal control that they need to free up so people can build homes and stuff like that. There's a lot of resources on these federally controlled lands that we need. There's going to be a, I really feel there's going to be a water shortage. I mean, we're, we're heading toward the water, a water drought now here in Arizona. Uh, well, especially Flagstaff, they're building all these damn college, these college dorms and shit like that in the in within the city. That's sucking up a lot of damn water. Uh, we used to, we had a lake called Lake Mary, uh, Upper Lake Mary, Lower Lake Mary, and they used to be full to the brim. Upper Lake Mary is now empty. Okay, that was Flagstaff Reservoir, and that's literally, literally has disappeared because of all these damn student dorm houses that are being put up. Uh, there's a lot of fast food restaurants that are now being put up in Flagstaff. Flagstaff is becoming something it wasn't supposed to be, and it's becoming big. It's gentrified as fuck, and people hate hearing that shit, but it's true. Flagstaff is gentrified as fuck. And within the world, we're going to start having wars over resources. I mean, we're already kind of sort of doing it, but I think water is going to become an issue. Uh, land for vegetation growth is going to become an issue because people love to eat their meat. <laughs> I know that sounded really bad, huh? People love to eat their meat and when you animal farm, it takes up more resources than natural vegetation. And once they use up the resources on these animal farms, they move into a different location because the, the land becomes dry and fucked up. I mean, look at Australia. Why do you think they were having all those damn huge fires over there because of the animal farming? They used up all the damn resources, all the water, everything. I also feel that we're, I don't think we're going to have another pandemic. I feel that we're going to be, I think, socially castrated. We're going to be knee deep in the metaverse. People are already unsociable as it is. They want their space. They want everything. And I think, I think during that time, people are going to be jacked into the metaverse just to get away. We're going to see an uprise of a whole bunch of new social issues. Uh, we're going to see we're going to see people not getting along that well because people are going to be you know disconnected even more than they already are. Social media, I I really feel there's going to be a new form of social media that's going to be so damn interactive. You know, beyond the metaverse, I I feel I feel that we'll have a nat I, I don't know, I feel we'll have a natural a natural catastrophe. When you when you damage the earth the way it is, the earth is gonna fight back. The earth is a living organism. And it's or it's already fighting back. Look at these cold snap weathers, look at the flooding, look at the look at the the land shifts. Yes, the earth is fighting back. It's trying to heal itself. And one of these days, the earth is just gonna just go full steam just in healing mode and we're we're going to be wiped out that's why i said is it going to happen in five years time who knows the way that we're on our bullshit right now the way how you know us as stingy greedy ass americans know all in our feelings thinking that we're the top food chain people around the world yeah we're going to get it first I, I really feel there's going to be a couple of more wars. I think I think I think I don't think we're going to have World War Three, but I think we're going to have something major that's going to put America on the defensive. I don't know. I I I really feel there's going to be a lot of bad shit. Good shit. I feel people are going to be more spiritual. I feel people are going to have. There's going to be some more love in people's lives because they're going to see what's going on in society now. And in five years down the road, they're like, damn, well, I guess I got to get I got to get my shit together, don't I? Yes, you should. I, I really feel people for all for all the good, for all the bad shots. I say that's going to happen. Social media, social distancing uh, by social distancing. I mean, by people being logged onto the metaverse, being with them damn goggles on. I really feel that there's going to be more people out there trying to connect with nature and stuff like that and trying to get right with themselves. 
because that's not going to be for everyone. You know, that's, it's not. I mean, I, I, I know I'm not going to be in that damn metaverse. I might log in to check it out once or twice, but I, I love nature. People love nature. People, people love interacting. We are social creatures. So, you know, being unsocial is something that's learned. Okay, people, it's, it's people who they feel like, oh, I can't deal with humanity. I can't deal with this. I can't deal with that. I love my pets. I love this. I love that. And I do know some animal lovers. There's people who get along with animals better than they do people. But that's also, that's something learned. That's unhealed trauma. And people would not rather deal with their trauma and just bottle it up, band-aid up, or compartmentalize that shit as people are prone to do. I know several people who love compartmentalizing and, hey, that's okay. Your shit will have to be dealt with eventually. And in five years, we are going to have to deal with our shit. I think there's going to be huge medical breakthroughs. I think that people like me who are in the massage field, the natural medicines, alternative medicines, I really feel that we're going to get our comeuppance and be accepted by insurance companies. We're going to be accepted by the greater medical community. There's going to be standards and practices that are going to have to change within my field that is going to have to compensate for what's going to be going on in, in the next five years. You know, people coming back from the wars. I mean, I'm, I'm already dealing with a bunch of vets and current active members. Our, our company takes um, veterans assistance insurance. So I'm dealing with a lot of PTSD clients and stuff like that, massaging them, uh, doing other things. And, you know, you know, I like that. We're needed right now in that field for them. And bring them on. If you're a vet, especially here in town, if you hear this or if you're someone who lives in, in, who listens to the podcast, you live in Flagstaff, Arizona, send them to Mountain Medicine. We deal with, with veteran affairs and we deal with that insurance. We love helping the soldiers, even police officers, uh, uh, our first responders. We love helping y'all. Please come see us. Hot damn. What we do, we love y'all, man, because we, I thought my job was hard as a damn massage therapist by dealing with anyone's crazy ass energy, but you're also needed. Five years, I really feel that a lot of the alternative medicines and practices will be mainstream. It's going to be needed. So I hope that answers your question. Damn, that was pretty good. I didn't realize that I came, that came out of nowhere and a lot. I had a lot to say on. <laughs> it's all good. I can hear people in the background. Big daddy, shut the fuck up already. Next question. Yes, I guess so. <laughs> Big Daddy, what's one lesson your job has taught you that you think everyone should learn at some point in their life? Compassion. Hot damn, the compassion among people nowadays is zero. I'm serious. I know some of y'all going to say, no, mine isn't. Bullshit, yours is too. Compassion, as I think, is an all-time low. The last, I think the last 12 years of the world dealing with Okay, I'll say it like this. The world deals with America's bullshit. The last 12 years between these these presidents have shown a huge amount of intolerance and people's compassion is at an all-time low because everyone wants to be right. Everyone wants to be first. Everyone wants to be, oh, well, you know, don't get out your emotions. No, intellect over emotions or, you know, your facts don't matter. No, your feelings don't matter. That bullshit right there has com has compounded a lot of uncompassionate people in this world and compassion is highly highly needed my job has taught me compassion again i ain't gonna lie there was a point in time where i didn't give a shit i, I was done fuck people fuck them and the fuck their feelings just fuck them in general fuck 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 but compassion when someone is on my table yes that's what i have from because i feel their energy i feel their pain and when I massage them, sometimes they break down. Sometimes they just start bumping at the damn gum so damn much. You know, I, I don't I don't want them to shut up, but they're kind of, I guess, defeating their own healing. But sometimes I've also learned that having a talkative person, having that compassion for them, that's part of their healing process. Even though they start getting riled up. And I have to keep working extra hard in their tissue. And then they realize and they, then they realize it and they're like, okay, I guess I should quit talking. No, hey, that's up to you. This is your time, your space. You treat it however you want to. I know I'm just doing my job. That's all I'm doing. 
And then they realize that and they calm down, they start breathing. And I, I, they just they just need to realize they just realize that someone has that compassion for them that they just want someone just to hear them out, even if it's political views, whether it's Democratic or Republican or as like they as like they they like to call each other libtards and Republicans and shit like that. And I'm like, really, all these nasty labels. And I I only say that because I use those labels at one times. I know what they are. I don't care about politics anymore because that's divisive. Anyway. I think compassion needs to be in everyone's vocabulary again, not only their vocabulary, but in their hearts, the way they feel in their soul, because that's something we just don't have for each other anymore. No, as human beings, we don't have compassion for each other. We'll have compassion for animals and stuff like that, but not, but not for our fellow human being. Oh, it's their fault. It's their fault. You don't know what happened to that person. I've dealt with with um, homeless people before. I've worked at the homeless shelters. I was like so many other people. Oh, oh fuck them! You know they brought it on. They brought it on themselves. Nine times out of ten, no, they didn't. Homelessness is not a choice. Homelessness is something that you just. It's. I've heard. I've heard some people's fucked up situations. I have met former ultra rich people who are now homeless in Flagstaff just for one reason or another. And that brought my compassion to them. Some people just had so bad, severe drug problems that they, that their families thought that the only way that they would get, you know, through it is by tough love, by kicking them out the house instead of getting them the help. And so they just stayed like that. I've developed compassion for people because God damn it, someone has to. I've always been a compassionate person. Well, I know that's I take that back. I just said I haven't. But over the last couple of years going to massage school, yes, I've developed that compassion again. And I'm glad I have because, like I said, there's so many people who just don't have it anymore. They want it. They, they want that tough love bullshit and they feel like they're in the right, you know, fuck your emotions, intellect over this, blah, blah, blah. That's fine. Stay where you're at. I'll be one of those compassionate people because it's needed. Yeah, it's needed. I, re- I really wish people learn more compassion. That's it. Sorry, broken record repeating. <laughs> Next question. Actually, it's the last question. Big Daddy, did you always want to be a healer? No. In case you missed the question, I said it real fast. Big Daddy, did you always want to be a healer? No, I didn't. Uh, there's other things I wanted to do, but this came on my lap because I needed something. I always wanted, I, I always wanted to see what it was like to be a massage therapist. I came into it not really thinking that, oh, yeah, okay, I'm going to do this for a while and do something else. But this shit has grown on me. It really has. Uh, I want to use massage therapy for a while to get money. That way I can go on my other endeavor, endeavors. In den, endeavors? There we go. Endeavors. <laughs> I can't even speak right now. Shit. But that's what I want to do. Over the last year, um, well, halfway through massage school and then doing a year now being a massage therapist, it's changed. There's people out there who do need healing. There's people out there who who do need that touch because COVID really fucked up the sociable people. When we went to lockdown, I swear, there was a lot of people. They, I mean, when they came back, when we opened up our doors and when, when people started coming in and now more than ever, we're getting, um, oh man, we're, we're getting a lot of people who just, they, especially well on my table, I can't speak for the other massage therapists, but on my table, I get a lot of breakdowns. I get a lot of people who start crying and stuff like that. And you don't know, it's just, you don't know what it's like to not be touched. I'm like, fool, I was in the same situation as you. Yes, I do know. But I don't say that. I don't, I want to. I said my mind, I'm thinking, yeah, fool, you, you know, the, the, the same shit. But because I'm one of those people who can stand comfortably being by himself, you no know, being, you know, yeah, being by myself 24 seven. I mean, sure. I miss people. Sure. I can go out and me have a good time with, with family and friends, stuff like that. But I am comfortable being alone. I'm comfortable, you know, standing in my own solitude, but not isolation. And a lot of people were isolated during COVID and they went ape shit. 
you know, I've worked on people who either their relationship strengthened, they lost their marriages or something. They lost people and they and they had no one to reach out to except for on the phone. These socially interactive people come to my table and I help them, make them feel good. And it does feel good. I I, I ain't gonna lie, I didn't I didn't choose this life. You know, I've I've learned how to massage over the years. I've told that story several times on the social vent podcast and even earlier episodes of Big Daddy Forever. But no, I never wanted to be a healer. I well, I wanted to heal in a different way. I wanted to to heal through my writing. I have three poetry books out, you no, know, and with one you no know, very, very short book called Single Dad that you can find on Smash Words and Amazon. Uh, Amazon Kindle, but no, I I didn't always want to be a healer. I wanted to be. I, I'm I'm a writer. I'm a storyteller. I'm an adventurer. I I that's that's my that's my love. Healing though, being a healer, gets me paid so I can keep on with this stuff. But it also teaches me that when I do write, I'm not more careful with my words. But I'm have I have I choose words that have a bigger impact, even with my crime shit. Like the crime stories I write, I I go for maximum impact, and that's what being a healer has also taught me. Impact. What's gonna work the best right now? Don't do all these. I mean, I see a lot of people do fancy moves, and I've had some fancy moves done on me. I'm just like, thank you, but can you just? <laughs> you just get your damn hands on me and do some healing you know but i i respect people who do all that stuff because that that takes some skill and that takes some talent me i'm just like here swedish oh i feel this right here then get this right here all right we're good on to the next spot oh your glutes are tight here elbow right there sink in all right your leg is twitching and shit all right that means you just had a good release Oh, okay. Other glue. Let me sink in right there. Oh, you just farted on me. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for not holding that in. And yes, folks, don't hold your farts in during a uh, a massage therapy session. You're going to hurt yourself. Okay. You have to release that. Your body's trying to expel all that bad shit, that bad juju, that bad energy, whatever you want to call it. Let it out. But don't be a dick and fart. While someone is by your face, by your legs, trying to do some work, okay? I've had so many damn people fart in my face, but I'm so glad that the that the, the sheet is over right there. <laughs> and I can jump back and dump it just in time. I hear, burp, whoa, hey, hey, all right. They're like, oh, I'm so sorry. No, 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 you're good. You're good. No, you had the sheet over you. It's all good. I'm, no, I didn't have a mask on, but hey, you know. <laughs> Oh yeah, Big Daddy got caught a few times like that. It's been it's been hilarious, but you know it it, it is what it is. You know, I, I I respect this life and what it's giving me right now. I respect that. You know, my spirits above. That's why I call. That's why I call them my spirits above. They threw this in my lap because, well, I was kind of floating through life. I was trying to do. I was trying to do my writing and podcasting and stuff like that. But I, it life knew spirits above knew I needed something more. I'm happy that this fell into my lap. I'm happy that I am giving this a chance, but I'm also more joyful that it's teaching me valuable lessons that I feel that my grandma was trying to teach me as she was teaching me, you know, the craft. And I'm so grateful for this. So I hope to answer your question. And speaking of questions, that's it for the questions. Big Daddy got to get going. I got to go throw some healing bombs on people as usual. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your, thank you for the questions. If you have more questions, check out check out my little comments below in the comment section. And yeah, hit me up. Check me out on Instagram. Check me out on on my podcast here on YouTube, and I will get to you. Please bring the questions. I love you guys. Okay. If no one has told you today, I love you. Stay up. Keep your peace. As always, protect your peace. Protect your neck. And stay up. Stay true to yourself. All right? I am gone. This is Big Daddy signing out. Peace.